Our next presenter is Mitch Weikert, and he's going to speak on the topic of astigmatism, how much to treat. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so these are my disclosures, not really pertinent to this talk. So astigmatism causes meridional variation in retinal image blur, which then produces a subsequent reduction in visual acuity, distance near, and also in stereo and contrast acuity. Now, one question I always have is, what visual acuity can I expect for a certain level of astigmatism? And when we're talking about mixed astigmatism, we can maintain 20-20 visual acuity with up to about 3 eighths of a diopter of astigmatism. Um, and we can maintain 20-25 acuity if that increases to about 3 quarters of a diopter. And we drop to about 20-40 at about a uh, diopter and a half. Um, the effect of astigmatism on vision is dependent on multiple factors, not just the magnitude, but the visual task you're performing, interaction with other aberrations, people size, accommodative state, neuroadaptation, and then the subjective blur threshold. So when the patients just start to perceive uh, the effect of astigmatism at about 20-25, that's about a quarter of a diopter. So what about distance visual acuity? Well, to orient you to these graphs, this is logmar acuity. So as we decrease on the uh, vertical axis, we're improving our visual acuity. As we go along the x-axis to the outer sides, to the left, we're increasing hyperopic astigmatism. To the right, we're increasing myopic astigmatism. And as we might expect, as we increase astigmatism in either direction, our visual acuity decreases. But we can see four curves here that are overlapping, at least in this study in pseudofakes, uh, the axis did not really affect uh, the effect on visual acuity. And for maintaining 2025 vision, we could tolerate about a diopter of hyperopic astigmatism for distance and about three quarters of a diopter of myopic astigmatism. The effect of pupil size is pretty obvious as our pupil size decreases from six down to three, down to one and a half. The effect of astigmatism on our acuity also decreases because we're increasing our depth of field with those smaller uh, pupils. Well, what about near visual acuity? Well, uh, if we look and we increase our hyperopic astigmatism, we're going to decrease our near visual acuity. But interestingly, if we increase our myopic astigmatism, we're actually going to see a little bit of a benefit in our near visual acuity. And why is that? Well, remember, we have our conoid of sturm. And as we bring our object of regard closer to the eye, we're able to take advantage of that conoid of sturm and actually maintain some visual acuity through that uh, transition. Um, it, similarly to distance, as we decrease our pupil size, we also see improvements in our visual acuity and less effect of astigmatism. Um, if we look at image quality uh, for uh, astigmatism, we can see that for distance acuity, if we just look at the pure effect of astigmatism without higher order aberrations and we add the aberrations in, we can see that we get a worsening effect on our distance acuity. But if we look at our near acuity, um, without higher order aberrations, and then with the addition of higher order aberrations, we actually see a little bit of improvement in our near visual acuity. Um, what about the effect of access one more time on astigmatism? So this is looking at distance and near acuity versus astigmatic axis with simple myopic with the rule or against the rule of astigmatism. And if we look at with the rule versus against the rule, when we look down uh, in the lower right corner here for near vision, Again, similar to what we just talked about, as we have a simple myopic with, uh, against the rule of astigmatism, and we bring that object in and look at near uh, foci, foci um, we're going to see uh, more clarity in the vertical lines of letters. So that's actually going to help us, uh, our ability to read um, at up close. So low levels of astigmatism are of particular regard for us because that's what we're trying to achieve. And we want to know how low do we need to get that astigmatism. Well, if we look at high contrast acuity and we start to decrease astigmatism uh, down from a half a diopter, we can see somewhat of an improvement in our high contrast acuity. And that effect is mostly seen as we decrease some of about a half to about 0.3 diopters. If we look at low contrast acuity, we see no benefit really decreasing that acuity below a half, or decreasing that astigmatism below a half a diopter. If we look at pure astigmatism and remove higher order aberrations, as astigmatism increases, we see a decrease in visual acuity, or image quality, I'm sorry, but as we look at uh, including higher order aberrations, that removes the effect or the benefit of uh, decreasing our astigmatism. What's the impact on multifocal IOLs? Well, here we see um, no astigmatism, 
and we can see the uh, defocus curve here where we see our peak at near to the left and at distance to the right. As we start to add in astigmatism here, a half a diopter, we see that our visual acuities decrease. We still maintain the profile of our defocus curve, but we see less of a distinction between near, intermediate, and distance. And then as we drop to a diopter here, we can see our curves start to flatten out. We're still able to maintain 2040 visual acuity across all distances, but we start to see, uh, see less benefit at near and distance. And then when we drop below that, we lose uh, the effect of the multifocal aspect of the lens at all. I'll finish here with age. Well, it's been shown very nicely by several papers with Hayashi that uh, we see an against the rule shift in astigmatism with time. Um, and this is seen both if eyes have had cataract surgery or if they've not had cataract surgery. And as we go from baseline to 10 years and then to 20 years, we can see a steady decrease of about, or a change of about a third of a diopter per decade. And as I said, this is consistent from zero to 10 as well as 10 to 20 years. And there was no difference whether the patients had cataract surgery or didn't, so they still saw that shift. So to sum all this up, uh, distance visual acuity decreases as astigmatism increases. Near visual acuity decre decreases with increasing hyperopic astigmatism, but actually improves with myopic astigmatism. For low levels of astigmatism, really only high contrast acuity improves as we decrease astigmatism, and that effect uh, basically goes away after you reduce to 0.3 diopters. Higher order aberrations really negate the uh, effect on image quality as we decrease astigmatism at low levels. Multifocal IOLs perform best with less than a half a diopter of astigmatism, and we see a shift toward against the rule of about a third of a diopter per decade. So my rule of thumb is I like astigmatism to be less than a half a diopter. If I'm really trying to push the envelope, I'll shoot for 0.3 diopters, and we like to leave just a touch of residual with the rule of astigmatism to compensate for that shift with age. Thanks. Thank you, Mitch. Uh, I like, you know, we appreciate the fact there's really, really smart guys like you that can figure this out, but you lost me at conoid of Sturm. <laughs> <laughs> so questions for Mitch. So Mitch, you mentioned it right at the very end of your talk, the, the sweet spot. We're not shooting for zero usually. We're, sweet, we're shooting for some residual withdrawal, but you didn't say how much. Um, I like a, about a quarter diopter is my goal. I'll tolerate maybe a half a diopter, and I don't mind flipping. It, you know. Yeah, I don't mind flipping at all. Is it age dependent? Do you, would you shoot for more with the rule in a 45-year-old versus a 65-year-old? Well, it's hard to convince a 45-year-old, look, I'm going to leave you with an extra diopter of astigmatism. And you may not like it at first, but you're going to love it in about 20 years. You know, it's a hard sell sometimes. So, so um, you made a really great point that in patients who will have, uh, that are naturally myopic with astigmatism, um, that it actually provides some level of pseudo accommodation and they have a quite they have great retention of their near vision even into their later decades of life. With that being said, if you were to leave them nearsighted after surgery, do you take that ever into consideration about not correcting that astigmatism so you can not leave them so nearsighted, but yet they have that better range? Yeah, I think if you do that, that's uh, definitely a worthwhile consideration, especially if they're the type of patient that you think will tolerate a little bit of defocus and doesn't have to be perfect. And then I think if you're in that, maybe that half to three quarters of a diopter, that's a little bit of a sweet spot for that. Yeah, along those same lines, if, if you're targeting a monovision eye, do you, per, do you change, does that change your uh, perception at all you know, versus a distance eye? Yeah, that's a great point. I've not really considered that myself personally, but given what Liz was asking too, I think that's an interesting thought. Yeah. Yeah. I, you have a question? I got one question. Okay, Sam. Uh, I, I understand there's a difference in leaving with the rule or against the rule depending on what characters you read. So Eastern characters, they, you get a little, you lose a little depth uh, or, or, or near vision with, with the rule versus Western characters. Does that play any uh, impact in your decision making in Houston? Um, no. no not, I've got enough on my mind. I really can't do that right now. <laughs> but great thought. I've got one more question then. So what is your thought on oblique astigmatism? Is it really natural obliques that occur, or are they with the rules that are going against the rule? I think it's a transition phase, and I think it's really hard to predict in that who's going to transition fast and to what level. So I pretty much go for those right on, and those I might not want to leave as much extra astigmatism as possible and really shoot for zero, I think. Yeah. Great. Thank you. 
the, f the fact that there are young ch you know, children that have oblique astigmatism kind of goes against the argument that's a transition. 